All right, guys, it is time for some digital pathology. Welcome to the focus segment. Here, we're going to unveil the technologies of a not too distant tomorrow. Every so often, a development reaches us that we just can't, we can't miss it. It's the way of the future in medical tech, and it's something far beyond anything we've ever dreamed of. Lab digitization is making bold leaps into the medical field. And today, we'd like to explore digital pathology. We're all familiar with cloud-based digital storage. After all, most of our work is carried out using some form of online infrastructure. But these aren't just Word documents or Excel spreadsheets that are being emailed through the office. I mean, we're talking high-resolution, ultra-precision imagery. Gigabytes upon terabytes of intimate medical information that's ready in an instant. By those, of course, who could be saving your life. So digital pathology is just that. It's sharing images between professionals as well as other patient data that include electronic records or who knows, diagnoses and other languages too. I mean, the, the possibilities of sharing are endless. With this method, it'll become possible to open scanned microscopic slides using different software and effectively mark areas that are crucial for diagnosis. Doctors can even add comments for further users or issue instructions for AI modules to complete some of the more routine legwork, the boring stuff, the things that would otherwise distract real medical progress. But that's a whole other story. I can get into that. So how does this work though? Doctors will manually choose the diagnosis based on a unique ID code. Now that's based on observations and medical know-how. You have to be a professional to do this. But these codes can be shared across a common network and they can be accessed by authorized doctors to amend, update, or even complete the diagnosis. In case of different diagnoses, the system can instantly verify and ID a specific sickness. And if that seems large, well, it's because it is. Digital pathology works on a tremendous scale, and when set up correctly, could be a revolution in medicine and healthcare. So this sort of initiative could only be carried out digitally, not physically. I mean, with a near infinite list of possible variables, pen and paper would just not be enough. Sending physical samples between physicians would also become a thing of the past. That of course is helpful, but needs a detailed image, very detailed image. Of course, here we're scanning microscopic glass. Colossal amounts of data are used. I mean, with up to two gigabytes per image, and that accounts for 20 to 50 slides per monitored person. So we could be looking at any, anywhere from 50 to 100 gigabytes per person. According to pathomorphologists familiar with this technology, the number of these slides depends on the diagnosis. In neurosurgery, it could be one to two slides. For lung cancer, it's 15 to 30 slides. And in gynecology, it's 30 to 60 slides per request. In some hospitals, they'll only scan a few slides, probably less than 1%. And that usually depends if they need to follow up with other consultations. But some hospitals have already switched to full digitalization, letting them cooperate between all sorts of organizations from hospitals, biobanks, universities, you name it. So what's needed? Well, very, very sophisticated infrastructure and funding, that's one thing, in addition to the software dedicated to handling the program. And that takes money and commitment. Let's not forget the dedicated physical servers and high-speed internet connections for instant cloud access and storage. Above all, sensitive medical data needs the highest level of protection. So any solution will need the highest standards of data safety with a safe and secure connection. But is there something that we can do in the meantime? Well, well-funded Swedish labs are actually supporting this. Funding is normally the largest hurdle in implementing this tech, and only certain practices are actually performed. Availability of digital capacity is therefore very low. So as a result, scientists aren't scanning everything. They like to keep it lean, so to speak. They only store info regarding the analysis of a physical sample, not the actual image of the sample itself. That would be far too big for any system to handle. So on the whole, only a few percent of actual samples are actually stored. Staffing is another issue too, by the way. The average age of scientists in some parts of the developed world is 60 plus. So we're talking about scientists that are actually close to retirement. Older users who are less adept and less enthusiastic at trying these new technologies. It doesn't really matter to them. There's also a shortage of younger pathologists. So that makes the problem even greater. So what can we expect to be coming our way? HoloLens technology allows for contactless dissection of tissue structure. 
And that lets scientists make new notes and add annotations without needing a dedicated lab partner to make these notes in the book or the computer. It frees up their hands as well. Meanwhile, digital pathology could also benefit from AI and diagnosis, let users make simpler decisions that would otherwise be time consuming and, and wasting for the scientists. But in this development, we're still a long way away. It is on its way though. It's coming. Well, that's it for this episode. Make sure to check us out on labinsider.com for more innovations and exciting developments. Join us for the next edition. My name is Max, and I'll be right here with you.